So I'm sitting in school and the teacher says, Troy, how about you? My heart drops. I'm like, oh, I look around. I think everybody's looking at me. Well, because they are, because the teacher called on me. But I'm like hyper aware of it. I get up in front of the class. I'm shaking. I'm like, oh. <laughs> that was me. Uh, yeah, I got sick of that life being nervous in front of people when I got a little bit older, like when I got to college age, uh, you know, making people uncomfortable, being awkward, being nervous, just being very, very nervous around other people. <clears throat> I eventually, if you have watched other videos on this channel, approached women, joined a public speaking class, got very confident. Here's two phases that you'll go through if you're getting less shy and, uh, yeah, less shy when you're in front of people. I read a comment online where somebody was like, I'm shy when I'm in front of people. And I'm like, it's interesting that they put it like that. Because a lot of times in life, like, we do feel like we're on a stage. Like, for example, if I go into the bar and I see a girl that I want to talk to, and there's like three or four other girls around her, if you walk up to that group of girls, it's almost like you're on stage. Or if you go into a party and then a friend's introducing you into, like, their group of friends, and then you're like, hi, everybody, <laughs> And <laughs> it's kind of like, like you're on a state, you're, you are in front of people. So here's two phases. Uh, I wrote notes for this. I came prepared. Um, two phases that I personally went through when getting less shy in front of people. So the first phase is getting in front of people more. That's how I overcame social anxiety. I put myself in more and more social situations. I started approaching girls on my college campus because that was... An intimidating thing for me to do started giving compliments started just meeting new people and uh, also just taking opportunities to go to any social environment that I could you know parties speaking in front of the class eventually joining a public speaking club just taking opportunities also just during my day to like say hi to random people like hey how's it going oh I like your shirt or whatever you know I just became that guy that open guy who was saying hi to everybody <clears throat> and I found that that was really effective because when you're saying hi over and over again to strangers, it's like there's not really much to lose, you know? I feel like a lot of people who are shy, at least if you're like me, I, it, a lot of people who are shy are nervous about coming off weird or coming off awkward. But if you're just like saying hi to a person in, pa in passing, like, hi, you know, they're walking past you. If it comes out weird, like, hey, ha have a good day or whatever. <laughs> and they're like, huh, what? They're like on their headphones. They're like, what? what? And you're like, Oh, I just said have a good day. What? Like, it's, I don't know. If it's an awkward interaction, it doesn't really matter because you're just two strangers. You don't know each other. Um, or even that could be the case even if you see somebody a lot. Like, if you're in class, it's like you say hi to them, uh, whatever. They, they don't see you or whatever, and it's awkward because <laughs> you don't speak up enough for something. They can't hear you. You have another chance the next day because you, you take class together. So, bottom line, getting in front of people and putting yourself in social situations, even if it makes you nervous, is the biggest thing. Now, the second phase is uh, speaking more from the heart and speaking what's actually in your mind. What I noticed is when I started approaching women on my college campus, you know, walking up saying, uh, excuse me, hi. Um, you know, do you, I just thought you were, I thought you looked cool or I thought you were attractive and I wanted to meet you, you know, or whatever I would say. Hey, I'm looking to overcome my confidence issues. I'm looking to build confidence. Uh, I say hi to a couple of random people. What's your name? What's your major? Where are you from? Doing my thing on my college campus, what I noticed was I would sit in the anxiety, and that's how I overcame it. But sometimes with those new people in class, um, taking opportunities to speak in front of people, and any new social situation, I noticed that sometimes I wasn't really being myself. I noticed that <clears throat> I would have a thought, like I would think of a joke and I wouldn't say it because I didn't think it was going to be funny or I would have a thought and I wouldn't speak it because I didn't want to offend people or I would have a thought and I just, I would hold it back. I would hold back my personality, what I really wanted to do, what I really wanted to say. So the next phase was actually in my friend group when I had a thought, just say that thought. It doesn't matter if nobody laughs at the joke. It doesn't matter if nobody gets it. It doesn't matter if... um this, that, or the other. I just forced myself to say it. And same thing with, uh, this is actually something I did very early approaching women. I, I relied on just complete honesty. Like, yeah, I'm feeling kind of nervous right now. 
I don't really do this much, but yeah, I wanted to meet you. Um, and then I would just say the first thing that came to mind. It was almost like keeping a conversation going was like a juggling act, but I would have to tap into what I was actually thinking and then just communicate it. Uh, yeah. And when I say that, I guess like a word of caution, like, like, <clears throat> you know, social skills are a big thing too, right? Like you can't, when I say like, just say what you want. Um, if you're a very negative person and if you have very like negative thoughts, that doesn't mean walking up to somebody obviously and going like, Hey, you look, you look stupid <laughs> or something, cause that's what you're thinking. Like that, <clears throat> it doesn't mean being rude to people. It means like, cause like, hold on, how do I explain that? I've just, I've, I've met people who, when I tell them to be more honest, like somebody that I'm coaching, um, they'll if they're a negative person, they'll just say a bunch of negative stuff and start complaining and venting. I, I've also had like, I remember a friend was like, man, I wish I could just be honest all the time, you know, just like tell somebody their shoes look horrible. But it's like, in my mind, that's you not shift. That's not you or that's you not focusing where your mind wants to be. Or maybe you want to be a negative person. If you want to be a negative person, you'll have to deal with the consequences. But I prefer to be more positive. I prefer to focus, to shift my focus on the positive. You don't have to say, hey, your shoes look horrible. You could say, hey, your hair looks nice. I like your hair. You could say, you could pick something that you like and not something that you don't like just so that you're not insulting people by being honest. Anyway, <clears throat> past that rant. Well, rant. So the two phases, okay? Putting yourself around people more and actually saying what's on your mind, just forcing yourself to do it. So that's where the authenticity comes in. The reason I have that second phase is because I felt like sometimes I was playing a character even after I got more confident. Because I was confident in social situations, but then I'll go into another social situation after practicing and stuff. Like I would go in class and then, yeah, sometimes I would say things just to be agreeable. Sometimes I would say things that I didn't really want to say or mean. And I'm like, oh, I'm confident now. I can be in social situations. But it's like, how are these people really going to react if I actually say what's on my mind? So that was the second phase. <clears throat> um, let's see. Oh, yeah. So the third phase for getting very comfortable or less shy around people, in front of people, in front of groups of people, is... A mindset. It's getting your mindset right. So, um, I noticed that when I was in high school, and if I had a speech prepared in speech class, like, I don't know if you watching this, if you remember, like, giving speeches in, like, English class or something in college or in high school, uh, we had, like, three speeches to give throughout the year, and it was always horrible. I always had butterflies in my stomach the day before, the night before, like, leading up to it the day of. Uh, and the first day was incredibly nerve wracking. I like hardly remembered the speech that I gave because I was so nervous. All I remember was walking up and coming back. And then um, by the end, though, I actually was enjoying it because I was like, oh, I can actually stand in front of my classmates and just just relax up here and just say some stuff. Read off my notes or whatever, <clears throat> my bullet points. So if you've made a speech before, you know that rehearsing the speech helps you a lot. It helps alleviate a lot of the nerves. Because if you know what you're going to say, then you just know what you're going to say. You can walk up there and you just say what you planned to say. So that's, that's, what, that's what people who are good at public speaking do. They rehearse and they rehearse and they rehearse and then they know their speech like the back of their hand. People who are great at public speaking though, just know the topic that they're talking about. They need less notes. All they need is bullet points. Kind of like me right now, I'm, talk I'm talking to the camera. I have notes that I'm kind of looking at to stay organized for this video, but I know the topic I'm talking about, so I don't necessarily need to look at my notes the whole time. I don't need to read off of something. I'm kind of speaking from the heart right now. So when I see a great public speaker on a stage, that's what he's doing. He knows his topic very well. So if anybody were, he can even have a Q and A, and if anywhere, anybody were to question him, he would have an answer. But here's my thing with the mindset. Whatever you bring to the table, whatever you bring to the stage for that public speech or whatever person that you bring into a new social interaction, 
that's the person that you're bringing. I feel as though a lot of people who are shy, uh, they go into new social situations and they, tr they want to seem cooler than they are, right? Like me, before I accepted the fact that I was really awkward, I didn't want to be awkward. I didn't want people to view me as quiet or shy. So when I didn't want people to view me as quiet or shy, I just started talking more and more. I was like, hey, what's up? Blah, 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 blah. I tried that freshman year of college and then people just thought I was awkward because, you know, I didn't really, I didn't pick up on social cues that well. I didn't explain my thoughts very well. I didn't have good rhythm and conversation back and forth. I was probably needy, desperate. I was trying to like talk so much and they were like, why is this guy trying to talk so much? This is not a good conversation. So uh, then it was like, oh, he's awkward. <clears throat> and I didn't want to be awkward. So I would try not to act awkward. And if you're trying not to act awkward, you're just going to end up acting more awkward. So <laughs> eventually I just accepted that. And it's like, you kind of have to, you kind of have to play the cards that you have and acquire more cards over time. So what I mean by that is when I was really awkward, I was like, okay, I'm awkward. I would go into a social situation and I'm like, okay, I know I'm this awkward guy, but I have decent conversation skills to the level of I can ask somebody where they're from. I can be kind of interested and curious. I can listen to what they're saying and I can understand what they're saying. I, like I, I'm, you have attributes watching this. I don't care if you think that you have no social skills whatsoever. I don't care if you think you're the shyest person in the world and you suck at talking to people. You have some level of social skills. You've talked to people before. Oh, I, I know a lot of people say that they're shy, but they're very talkative with their close friends. Yeah, why do you think? Because you don't care what your friends think. You know you can talk. You know you have social skills. So when you're in front of other people, uh, this third phase I'm talking about, the mindset is like, <clears throat> there's nothing to prove. If you're giving a speech or if you're in front of a new group of people, or you're in a new social crowd, there's nothing to prove because every single thing that you've done in your life has prepared you for this moment. The reason that I can be now or that somebody who's very, very confident in social situations can be confident in social situations is because they've been a lot of, They've been in a lot of them and they know themselves. They know who they are. Sure, uh, some people act, right? They just, they're very good actors. They go into social situations and they're like, hey, everybody, how are you? Da -da -da. And then they say things that um, make them look very like articulate and uh, they might even like lie to say things about themselves to make themselves look better. And then when they go home afterwards, they're just like laid down on the couch like, oh man, I'm so tired from socializing. And it's like, Side note, when I hear somebody's tired from socializing, more than not, they were just making themselves tired. I've never understood the introvert thing where like, I, I get that there are real introverts, but I think they're less common than you think because personally, I used to get very tired from social situations. But what I realized was uh, I was judging myself too much in social situations, so my brain was going crazy the whole day. Like eight hours of work, right? I'm socializing a lot at work. Eight hours of that, and then I go home and I'm tired. Why? Oh, I was judging myself the whole day. I was monitoring everything that I say. Too much brain work. Too much uh, indecision. Should I talk to this person? Should I not? What should I say? Um, also, like putting on a false persona all day. You ever you ever see somebody who's like? Or you, you ever do this yourself? Like you you make yourself smile even though you don't want to? Like, hey, how are you? Hi. You see this a lot at like customer service jobs. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Imagine having to do that for eight hours straight when you don't want to. Oh my God, you're going to be so tired afterwards. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, there's things you can do to like kind of like, okay, if you're like, if you're a very like monotone person, uh, you can like stretch yourself a little bit, like with close friends or even at home alone, like practice, like being more eccentric. And then your base level kind of goes in the middle instead of, am I even making any sense in this video? I don't even know if that makes sense. This is like a different topic, but <laughs> I think it fits in with that third mindset, that third phase of mindset. It's like, if you're preparing for a speech, instead of rehearsing the speech, Go a level deeper, prepare yourself on the topic so that you can just talk about the topic and then you can have bullet points, look at those bullet points and be like, oh yeah, I know this. So everybody, blah, 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 blah. And then you talk about the topic. 
Um, and if you're meeting a new group of people, the concern when you meet a new group of people, let's say a friend is introducing you to a new group of friends, you're nervous because you don't know if they'll accept you, right? You think that you have to like prove yourself. And then once they accept you at the end of the day, you're like, oh man, okay, well, I did a good job. First impression. That was a cool party. I did a good job talking to them. Now I don't need to worry about it. They accepted me. Except they accepted your performance. They didn't accept you. They accepted your performance. So now when you go back, you have to keep performing. It's exhausting. You have to... The problem with seeking people's approval all the time is that once you get it, you're just concerned of it going away. If you are to just be yourself in every situation, you know, not trying to prove yourself, just kind of like whatever, maybe in that moment, it means you don't even talk that much when you meet new people. Sometimes that can be cool if you don't talk that much. But whatever you bring to the table that day, people are going to accept it or not. And you, you don't really have to do a lot of like effort if you've been putting in the effort, the speech analogy. If you've been studying the topic all week, say you're giving a speech on science, you're giving a speech on the biology of salamanders. If you've been studying the biology of salamanders for a week straight, and then you go up in front of a stage of whatever, a classroom full of people, and you're supposed to give the speech on salamanders, don't you think maybe you're going to be a little bit less nervous? Don't you think you're going to be a little bit more relaxed just because you know the topic so well? You can probably talk about salamanders for 15 minutes straight, no problem, because you've been studying it all week. <laughs> don't even need bullet points or anything or a structure for that speech. You could literally just give a speech on salamanders because you know everything now because you've studied them. That's how I feel in social situations. Um, I went out to meet a, a group of people, uh, my brother actually invited me to meet some of his friends last weekend or the weekend before or something. And I, um, yeah, I walked in and I, I was kind of like reminded of that fact in my own head. I'm like, yeah, I, I've spent the last like five or six years kind of pushing myself on and off, I guess, in like new social situations, but trying to be consistent about it. So I'm used to this. I'm used to going in new social situations. I'm used to talking to people. And it's like, <clears throat> am I perfect at talking to people? No. Am I perfect at meeting new people? No, but I've practiced and what I bring to the table now is what I bring to the table. And if you're watching this and you haven't, if you haven't approached a bunch of girls on your college campus, like I have, if you haven't gone to like new places and just talk, made conversation with random people at the bar a billion times, like I have not a billion, but a lot. <laughs> and if you haven't, uh, joined a public speaking class, like I have, then Maybe you're not going to be as comfortable or skilled in a new social situation, but whatever you bring to the table, you bring to the table. Maybe you go in and you're like, you are kind of tense and nervous. Just notice it, observe it. That's you. That's, that's how you're handling yourself in that situation. Now you've prepared yourself for it or you've failed. You've lacked preparing yourself for it. However you want to look at it, but whatever you've done in life up until this point, that's who you are. So if you want to get more comfortable in social situations, put yourself in more of them. But right now, whatever you bring to the table in these new social situations, that's you. Nothing to worry about. There's nothing you can change. Don't put on a performance. People can see through that anyways. It'll exhaust you. Just be you. Accept you. If you're awkward, accept that. If you're amazing at socializing, accept that. If you're pretty good, if you have like decent conversation skills, which I'm sure everybody watching this has like some level, like I said, of conversation skills, or actually you do. Like if, if you've talked to a human being before, <laughs> even if you, you were just born and you've only known one person your entire life and you met them for a minute and then you've been living alone for the rest, you have one minute of conversational experience and that's you. That's your experience. Yeah. Hope I hammered that, uh, point enough. Oh yeah. One final thing. Jesus, this video is getting long, isn't it? Oh my gosh, this is a really long video. Uh, bonus tip is like, be, or just a side note that I've noticed for myself, becoming more confident, be proud of the hobbies and characteristics that you have as a person. So if you're not 
happy about some characteristics about yourself. Let's say you have some bad qualities, like you don't show up on time or you're mediocre or you're addicted to junk food or, and you don't like it and you just binged last night and you feel like a piece of shit or <laughs> something, whatever. For me personally, I've had like, you know, addictions, uh, nothing like super crazy, but like certain addictions to uh, like certain habits that I'm not proud of in my spare time. It like pleasure seeking stuff, <clears throat> you know, pornography and whatnot. And, uh, like, uh, binging on drunk food, like, I don't know, dr I like drinking beer, perhaps, a little bit too much sometimes. Certain, certain things where you know that you're just, like, neglecting yourself, if you don't like it, and if you can't accept that about yourself, work to change it. Realize that you have that addiction, work to change it. If you're working to, a cha to change it, actually actively working to take steps, like, one step today to change it to get away from that habit, then you're going to feel a little bit better about yourself. Um, so yeah, you might need to accept where you are or even change your habits if you're not proud of them. Uh, yeah, and then I wrote down in my notes, I spent most of my time watching porn and YouTube and was not proud of it, just binging on this stuff, like sitting in bed, just becoming like, oh, you know, clicking, 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 just looking for entertainment. Um, and I didn't want to speak to people, but when I started working on something I'm proud of that helps the community or other people, then I started to feel better about who I was. Making these YouTube videos and organizing them and doing as good of a job as I can and getting better, like, this makes me feel good about myself. Like, it's, uh, what time is it? It's 9 a.m. right now, and I'm making this video. If I, um was being lazy right now, if I wasn't even working, if I was just being lazy, and then I went and talked to a person at 12 p.m. today, I had lunch with somebody. If I had been lazy, I don't want to be lazy. See, I, I realize I feel better about myself when I'm doing something productive that's helping other people, um, or with the intention of helping other people, as opposed to doing something that's completely pleasure-driven like binging on a mindless YouTube video that doesn't give me anything. That has nothing to do with my life. It's just like entertainment. So, um, yeah, when I do stuff that I'm proud of, by the way, uh, I, I'm less needy and I'm less starving for attention. That helps alleviate my anxiety around people. Because, like I said with the, my brother inviting me out the other day example, if I go out and I'm hanging out with people and then I go home, it's like... Whether they like me or not, I'm still coming back to myself. I still get to make these videos. I still get to do something that I'm proud of. I don't go home and if I go home and distract myself on YouTube, like, oh man, oh, I wish they would have liked me. Oh, watching YouTube, that's different, right? So you start to approve of yourself rather than looking for approval of other people if you start doing things in your spare time that you're proud of. And then you have more to share with other people. It's just, it's really good for you. So, um, learning to be comfortable around others and communicate well, that's another thing. Uh, you may not feel like you can communicate well, but practice makes perfect. I'm just reading off my notes at this point. And if you combine this with knowing yourself, being proud of who you are inside, you stop looking for approval from others and a huge ease comes over you in social situations. So what, just like I said, um, you don't need any, I typed these out yesterday in the cafe. You don't need anything to happen. They don't need to like you because when you go home and look in the mirror, you already approve of yourself. Yeah, so I just said that. So, <clears throat> yeah, so that kind of concludes this video. I guess just to reiterate, phase one is getting yourself in more social situations. Don't give a shit about where you're at right now. Don't give a shit about how nervous you get. Don't give a shit about what, what quirky, weird things you have about your personality or your behaviors in social situations. Get yourself in front of people. Experience this. I experienced the shaking, the anxiety, the shyness, the, the urge to just close up and run away. I experienced all that. But guess what? If you just sit there with that feeling, it, it, you start to show it who's boss. It starts to mean less. The anxiety that you experience in social situations, it starts to mean less. It starts to control you less. Phase two is uh, speaking. 
speaking more from the heart. So getting yourself to speak more what's on your mind, no matter how people are reacting to it. If you think of a funny thing to say, but you're too shy to say it because you don't think that people will laugh, say it anyways. It doesn't matter if they laugh because you're building a good habit where you're, you want to become less shy, right? You clicked on this video because you want to become less shy. Part of becoming less shy is having a thought and saying it, being extroverted. Look at extroverts. What do extroverts do? They just talk. Have you ever seen somebody who's incredibly extroverted? They just walk into a room. It's full of people or, you know, a couple people, whatever. Or they walk, they walk up to a cashier at a, at a store and they're just like, uh, man, what a day. I got Taco Bell earlier. It was insane. They gave me a Doritos Locos taco. Like they just start talking about their day. There's open. And then the third thing is the mindset. The mindset of whatever you bring to the table right now, it's fine. Work towards what you want, right? If you want better social skills, if you want to feel more comfortable in social situations, learn to communicate your thoughts more, get yourself in more social situations. You'll get better over time in those situations, but accept where you're at. And if you have like a, an event coming up where you'll, you'll be in front of people, whether that is like a classroom activity where you're speaking in front of people or whether that is just you um, meeting a group of new people, whatever it is, like everything that you've done in your life has prepared you or hasn't prepared you, like it's, it's prepared you for this moment. And if you want to be more prepared for those moments, practice. I remember when I was in college, just a final note, um, when I started approaching people, like, you know, approaching three new people a day on my way to class, I was... The feeling of confidence that I experienced in class was significantly heightened just because before class, imagine you're walking to class, you have your head down, headphones in, you don't talk to anybody, you get to class and then you have to open yourself up. You're like, hey, everybody. Or let's say you don't have the headphones in. You're looking around in the world. You know, you're saying hi to random people. Hi, I like your shoes. Excuse me. Hi. Um, this is kind of random, but I like to meet a few new people a day. Uh, What's, what's your name? Um, I'm building my confidence. I know it's random. Yeah. Okay. You're this. Okay. Where are you from? Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm from over here. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What do you study? How'd you get into that? Why? Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Well, Hey, it was nice meeting you. Like if, if you do that a couple of times on your way to class and then you get to class, you walk into class and you're like, <sighs> you already talk to people. It's no big deal to just talk to your classmates. So anyways, that's my final message for the video. Those are the three phases for becoming less shy in front of people. If that's what you want to do, if you're if you're shy in front of people and you want to become less shy, you want to become more outgoing, that's those are three phases that you can go through. Three phases that you can actually implement. You can face these things. So don't let this video go to waste. If you watch this whole thing, you're like, oh, these are good tips. These are good tips. Don't insult me like that. They're not just good. <laughs> insult me like that. Uh <laughs> Don't just waste this video. I'm making this video so that I know not everybody's going to take action on it, but I hope like one person watches this, they wrote down the three phases and they, they actually go out and become more confident, become a little bit less shy, open up, start interacting with their world more and like become a happier person. That's my goal with this video. So be that person. Like don't let, don't let this video just go to waste as something you forget. You know, if, if you watch this whole thing, and then it's just something that you forget at the end. Because I've done that before with YouTube videos. But like your life gets so much better if you watch a video and then you write down the actionable things that they talk about in the video. And then you actually go out and practice it. That's, that's the way to improve.